Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Green's Functions. In this chapter, you're going to see the coming together of many, many areas of mathematical physics that we have been studying. And we return to the low pass filter, which we have looked at before in detail. We simply have an RC circuit where we're looking at the voltage across the capacitor as the output, and the input voltage is over on the left. With this input square voltage, pulse, we find a charging phase when the voltage goes high. Notice that the voltage starts at zero because there's no charge initially on the capacitor. And when the charging phase comes to an end, that correlates to when the voltage drops back to zero, and then we have the discharge. We know that this function is given by a convolution of the input voltage function and that's convolved with the function g, which is the simple decay of the capacitor, e to the minus t. This is a Green's function, and we're going to study this in great detail, the Green's function in this chapter. Well, let's look at the differential equation that describes this system. We have a voltage going from ground up to the left side of the resistor, F of T, and then we have a voltage drop here across the resistor and a voltage drop across capacitor, which you can write as F of T minus those things equals zero, but I just simply brought those on the other side so that going from this point to this point is equal to the sum of these two voltages, IR, Ohm's law, and the capacitor voltage formula Q over C. Then with the resistance equal to 1 ohm and the capacitance equal to 1 farad, you have this nice simple differential equation. I take the Laplace transform on both sides. This becomes capital F of S, and since the initial charge is 0, I simply have S times the Laplace transform of little q, which I represent here as big Q of S, and the Laplace transform of the little q. Now when I solve this, I find that I get Q is F of S times 1 over S plus 1. That 1 over S plus 1 is the G of S, capital G of S. The capital F of S relates to our input voltage and the secret of understanding the system is all in that G. Notice that the inverse Laplace transfer of that G, if you use this, you get your E to the minus T. Now it would be nice to isolate this and to not have this input uh, voltage to worry about and if you say well let it be zero then I have a problem because if I have zero here the Laplace transform of zero is zero and I can't solve so what I really want is to have a function little f of t so that the Laplace transform is a one see if this is one then the solution in transform space is completely that G, capital G of S, which has all the essential properties of that system. So let's do that. Let's look for a function so that the Laplace transform of it gives us a 1. Well, here's the Laplace transform definition, and what f of t gives 1? Do you see it? It's the direct delta function. The direct delta function sifts out, direct delta function delta of t sifts out the function evaluated where at t is equal to zero. So here you have at t equals zero, you have e to the zero, which is one. So the direct delta function does the job. So with that f of t, the solution is special. It's the e to the minus t, which is a Green's function. That special function that gives us the response when we whack the system with a Dirac delta function. And then the general solution is given by a convolution of the Green's function with the function that we are applying to the system and that can be thought of as each decay is 
being applied to a res as, a, as a response to what you're doing at some time u. So since some time u is shifted from you know, t equals zero, we shift to that t minus u and apply that there. So that kind of all makes sense, but it'll make even more sense as we proceed in this chapter.